Let's take a look at the video you requested, the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Eurofighter Typhoon is a highly capable 4th plus generation multi-role fighter with exceptional performance, advanced avionics, and superior maneuverability. The product of lessons learned from the Cold War, the Typhoon is a result of an extended collaboration between Germany, Spain, Italy, and the UK. Notable features include canards, a delta wing, dual engines with a split intake under the belly, and an extensive amount of hard points for mounting weapons. Let's take a look at some specifications for the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Eurofighter Typhoon is equipped with an internal 27mm Mauser BK-27 revolver cannon. Typical loadouts include 150 rounds. Additionally, the Eurofighter has an incredible 13 hardpoints for mounting various air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. This abundant amount of hardpoints gives the Eurofighter unprecedented loadout options, including the ability to carry 6 bombs, 6 missiles, and a targeting pod in the same sortie. Few, if other aircraft, can match that kind of loadout flexibility on a single mission. Here are some sample loadouts for the Eurofighter. Air Superiority Swing Roll Interdiction And Close Air Support The Eurofighter is constantly being upgraded to add new weapons platforms to its already impressive arsenal. One such example is the Meteor missile. The Meteor is a Mach 4 beyond visual range missile that has a range in excess of 150 kilometers, along with a no escape zone of over 60 kilometers, which is greater than any other air to air missile in use today. The Eurofighter boasts some of the most advanced sensor platforms currently in service. Ergonomic and user interface features were studied extensively to develop a cockpit environment that provides real-time information while reducing workload on the pilot. The heads-up display or HUD was designed to be as large as possible and work with night vision goggles. Additionally, three full-color multifunction heads-down displays or MHDDs can be configured to present maps, checklists, overall status, and other sensor data. The Helmet Mounted Symbology System, or HMSS, provides flight telemetry, weapon arming, and can also work with night vision goggles. In addition to the hands-on throttle and stick, or HOTAS interface, the Eurofighter also incorporates voice commands or direct voice input to produce a voice throttle and stick or VTAS system. All of these systems integrate seamlessly to provide the pilot with a 360 degree view of the battlefield. Additionally, the Eurofighter sensor suite allows for full data linking capabilities, pulling in data from other assets including sea, air and land, as well as being able to share that data. The flight control system is a quadruplex digital system which provides extensive redundancy and greater survivability in the event of damage or system failures. The Eurofighter also makes use of the Praetorian DASS or Defensive Aid Subsystem, which provides threat assessment as well as both electronic and physical countermeasures. This system includes laser warners, flare launchers, chaff dispensers, missile warners, wingtip ECM pods, and even a towed decoy. It is important to note that the Praetorian DASS system is fully integrated into the Eurofighter, meaning that there is no need to carry additional external pods. 
To reduce the pilot's workload, the DASS system is fully automatic, including the flare chaff dispensers, which will deploy in an intelligent pre-programmed pattern. The system can also be manually overridden by the pilot. Providing air-to-air -air passive target detection and tracking, as well as providing air-to-ground target identification and acquisition, is the Passive Infrared Airborne Track Equipment, or PIRATE, system. The PIRATE system is easily distinguishable as a protrusion on the left side of the nose. For its search radar, the Eurofighter carries a mechanically actuated Captor M system, which provides multiple sensor modes. The improved non-mechanical actively electronically scanned array, or AESA, radar, known as the Captor E, is a planned upgrade for most Eurofighter partner nations. While the origins of the Eurofighter can be traced all the way back to the early 1970s, it was in 1979 when the program took shape. The European Collaborative Fighter, or ECF, program was formed between British Aerospace, or BAE, and Messerschmitt Blucow Blom, or MBB. Soon, French-based Assault joined the program and it was renamed to the European Combat Aircraft, or ECA, program. However, the ECA program would be disbanded by 1981, largely due to the French insistence on the use of their locally sourced SNEMA-88 engine. The future of a European collaborative fighter appeared to be in doubt. That would change when BAE and MBB were joined by Italian base Aritalia. The three had a proven track record together, having jointly developed the wildly successful Tornado. The new collaborative effort would become known as the Agile Combat Aircraft or ACA program. The ACA led to a preliminary design which did feature canards, but soon the Italian and German governments pulled their funding. This led the British government to offer 50% funding to BAE and a technology demonstrator was ordered. This effort became known as the Experimental Aircraft Program, or EAP. By 1983, yet another program was initiated between France, Germany, Spain, and the UK. This new program would be known as the Future European Fighter Aircraft, or FEFA. Some of the goals of the FEFA program were beyond visual range or BVR capabilities, along with the ability to conduct carrier operations. The French insisted that they lead the FEFA program, which drove the Germans, British, and Italians once again to go in their own direction and set up the European Fighter Aircraft Project, or EFA. By 1985, the joint venture agreed to the creation of the Eurofighter. Meanwhile, the French would continue their development efforts, which would eventually lead to the excellent Dassault Raphael. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. Getting back to the Eurofighter. By 1986, the previously mentioned Experimental Aircraft Program, or EAP, had led to a flying example, which served as a technology demonstrator. The technology demonstrator logged almost 200 of hours of flight time in over 250 flights. By 1987, requirements had been finalized for the program. With the fall of the Soviet Union and the reunification of Germany occurring in the 1990s, Germany became an even more integral part of the program, which was now being referred to as the Eurofighter 2000 or EF-2000. By 1998, the first production contract was signed and the official name Typhoon was designated. Deliveries began in 2003 and by 2008, the Typhoon was designated combat ready. The Typhoon makes use of the exceptional Eurojet EJ200 low bypass turbofan engines, which deliver 60 kN of thrust dry or 90 kN of thrust with afterburner. This output allows the Eurofighter to supercruise or break the sound barrier without using afterburners. While not designated as a stealth aircraft, the Eurofighter does have a considerably small radar signature. This is due to two main factors. The first being the intake ducts have an S-shaped design to them, which partially conceals the engine fan blades. Engine fan blades are a major source of radar return in most fighters. 
The other factor is the Eurofighter's extensive use of composite materials that not only reduce the radar signature, but also reduce the overall weight of the aircraft. While initially delivered as an air-to-air -air only platform, continuous upgrades and add-ons have turned the Eurofighter into a true multi-role aircraft. Typhoons are manufactured in sub-assemblies in Germany, Spain, Italy and the United Kingdom, with each partner nation conducting assemblies locally. The Eurofighter is currently in operation by the following countries. Germany's Luftwaffe, the United Kingdom's Royal Air Force, Spain's Ejército del Aire, Italy's Aeronautico Militari, Austria's Luftstreikkrafte, Saudi Arabia's Royal Saudi Air Force. Future operators include Oman's Royal Air Force, Kuwait's Air Force, and Qatar's Air Force. To date, over 550 Eurofighters have been delivered. While the program was delayed many times and with well-documented cost overruns, it is hard to argue against the Eurofighter's success. With adoption by nations in Europe and the Middle East, the Eurofighter represents frontline fighter technology, which many argue is Generation 4.5. With its incredible amount of hardpoints, exceptional maneuverability, high top speed, high service ceiling, and advanced avionics, the Eurofighter will be a high-end platform for years to come. Can the Eurofighter beat an F-22? Could it beat an Su-57? Does it depend on the scale and training of the pilots? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what future videos you'd like to see. Stay safe and see you next time.